Hi, in this lesson for Integers Unit, our goal is to understand absolute value and to be able to take integers and compare them and then also to put them in order. To start, let's take a look at the numbers we have listed here and reminding ourselves that integers um, can be defined as all the whole numbers um, and their opposites. So if we take a look, we're going to determine if we indeed have an integer example here. So we start with 73. Well, an integer is the whole number and its opposites, so 73 would be considered an integer. Here we have 62 and 9 tenths. 62 and 9 tenths is a decimal, which means in this case, we have a whole number and a part of a number. This would not be an example of an integer. Here we have negative 8 elevenths. This is a fraction, which means it's a part of a number. We don't even have one whole. So this would be a non-example of an integer. Negative 7. Well, it's the collection of all the whole numbers and their opposites. So this would be considered an integer. 235,000 is a whole number. One fifth is a part of a number or a fraction. So this is not an integer. Negative 349 is an integer. 0.6 or 6 tenths, again, does not indicate a whole number. So we would cross it off. All right, moving on to our lesson after we've reviewed, we're going to take a look at this number line. And I, again, want to point out a couple of things. First, notice that we have our collection of whole numbers that include both positive and negative integers. I also want to point out something, since we're going to be talking about comparing and ordering, that the number to the right on a number line, whatever number is to the right is always greater. So if I start with negative 1 and I look to the right, I know that 0 is greater than negative 1 because I'm going to the right. So any number on the right in a number line is going to be greater. Taking a look at another example, negative 3. Negative 2 is to the right of negative 3 on the number line. And since numbers get larger as we move to the right, I know that negative 2 is larger than negative 3. Another thing that I want to point out to you that I want you to notice is if I would put a point on the number line, this point on the number line indicates 2. That means that this point is two places away from 0. If I go over here and indicate negative 3, negative 3 is three places away from 0. The number of spaces from 0 is a number's absolute value. Let's take a look at that more specifically. The definition of absolute value is the number of spaces from 0. What that looks like is your number with two vertical lines on either side of it. That indicates the absolute value of negative 7. Since the absolute value is the number of spaces from 0, I know that negative 7 equals 7 spaces from 0. So the absolute value of negative 7 is 7. Let's take a look at a couple more examples. The absolute value of 3, well, 3 is 3 spaces from 0, so it would just simply look like the number 3. The absolute value of negative 12 is 12 spaces from 0. So the absolute value would equal 12. Notice that when we're talking about absolute value, it's always just whatever number is in between those vertical lines without a sign. To introduce ordering numbers, or for many of you to review ordering numbers, we're going to go back to our number line. Here I have an example that says place these numbers on the number line. Negative 1, 0, negative 3, 
4, and 3. So if I start plotting these on the number line, negative 3, 4, and 3, I can see the order of these digits from smallest to largest. Remember that as numbers go to the right, they get larger. So I would start with my first plotted point, and I can list these numbers from smallest to largest. Negative 3, negative 1, 0, 3, and 4. Since we don't always want to have to draw out a number line every time we're putting a group of integers in order, I'm going to show you a couple things about comparing and ordering integers. One hint I always give my students is to think about money or temperature. That, that might help you wrap your brain around putting negative numbers and positive numbers in order or comparing them. This one's a pretty elementary problem. We're comparing 7 to 3. Well, we know that 7 is greater than 3. So I'm going to indicate that with a greater than sign. I know that some people still mix up which way do I point the greater than and less than sign. But I always think that the larger opening is going to face the larger number. The smaller point is going to point to the smaller number. 7 is greater than 3. Sometimes it gets a little tricky when we see negative integers. Here I'm comparing negative 7 to negative 3. Here's how I help myself when I'm comparing by thinking about money or temperature. Let's start with money. If I had a bank account, well, first of all, if my bank account was negative $7 or negative $3, both of those examples would be bad because that means I have spent more money than I have. But if I look at what would be better for me, it would be better for me if I only owed the bank $3. I would still have more money if I owed the bank $3 than if I owed the bank $7. Another way to consider comparing integers is to think temperature. Warmer is greater. So what's warmer? Even though both of these temperatures would be considered cold, negative seven degrees below zero, three degrees below zero, negative three is still a little bit warmer than negative seven. So negative three would be greater. The way this sentence is written, negative seven is less than, a little point, negative three. Here we have 11 compared to a negative 5. Well, that one's pretty easy. I'd rather have $11 in my bank account than owe the bank 5. 11 degrees would be much warmer than 5 degrees below 0. So 11 is greater than 5. Now we have an added step. This reads the absolute value of negative 8 compared to the absolute value of 4. So the first thing I have to do is I have to solve the absolute value. Since we know that absolute value is the number of digits from zero, negative eight is eight spaces. So if I were to solve this, the answer would be eight. The absolute value of four would be four. Remember, it's just the number without the sign. So here I'm comparing eight and four. Eight is greater than four. So I would put a greater sign there. Remember that numbers to the right on a number line are greater. So you could also draw yourself a little number line in worst case scenario. Let's try a few more problems together before you move on to practicing on your own. Here I'm going to be thinking with my money or my temperature to help me. Well, five and negative one, I really don't need to think that hard. I know that positive numbers are always greater than negative numbers, so that one's pretty good. But here, when I have two negative numbers, my brain always wants to pull to that four, but I have to remind myself it's the opposite with negative numbers. If I had these on a number line, two would be to the right of negative four, so two's going to be larger. But let's use my money and temperature again. 
negative two degrees, negative four degrees. What's gonna be warmer? Negative two is gonna be a little bit warmer than negative four. Or if I was negative two dollars in my account, that's still better than being negative four. So I'm gonna put the bigger opening to the larger number. So this would read negative four is less than negative two. Here, again, I'm going to have to do some solving. In this comparison, I have negative 10, the absolute value of negative 10, compared to 8. First, I have to solve what the absolute value of negative 10 is. We know absolute value is simply the number without the sign or the number of spaces from 0. 10 is greater than 8. Here, I have two absolute values. The absolute value of 5 and the absolute value of negative 5. If I were to compare those, again, I'm going to solve. This would be 5, and this would also be 5. So in comparing this, 5 is equal to 5. In our last practice example that I'm going to show you, here I have a cloud of integers, both positive and negative, and I'm being asked to put these in order from least to greatest. Well, I don't know about your brain, but depending upon the time of day, what's going on, this could be pretty confusing. I do know that negative numbers are smaller than positive numbers. So I'm going to just focus right now, since I'm going least to greatest, on the negative numbers. I know they're going to be the smallest. So I'm going to use my temperature. If I look at these three negative numbers, what's the coldest? That would be 11 degrees below zero, or negative 11. So I'm going to put negative 11 as my smallest number, my least number. Well, the next coldest would be negative 9 and then negative 5. I'm left with a value of 0 and then positive integers. Well, I know 0 is going to be next. 0 is greater than these, but it's smaller than these positive integers. And when I'm left with positive integers, it's pretty easy for me to put those in order because I've been used to dealing with those more. So I have 2, 5, 6, and 7. Now you're going to try some on your own, and then we're going to be doing some application problems in our groups.